So welcome everyone. My name is Dallas, and this is the place where we talk about food in and around Victoria, BC. And today I'm at the Chinatown location of the village, and I'm here with two lovely gentlemen, Jason and Brian. Hello. How are you guys doing? It's going good, man. Dude, Very it's good. so good to see you guys. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. We just had the most killer meal. I, I had no idea actually that you guys were doing Asian food here at uh, the Chinatown location. I mean, it makes sense, but I, I, because before when I was here last time, it was just like the other village locations, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah we that was quite a while ago. <laughs> yeah, we didn't we didn't know it either. It just kind of <laughs> uh, it was just kind of our reaction to everything that was going on, and yeah. uh, I think. Uh, for us with the village, we've always messed with Asian a little bit. I think if you follow us, you know, we've done, we've done some ramen pop-ups and we had the rickshaw, rickshaw residency, we call it mm -hmm. for about three months. And I love breakfast. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I think Brian and I are both pretty passionate about Asian food and, uh, we take you out for lunch. Most of the time it's probably going to be a bowl somewhere, you know, um, I, I mean, I even travel based upon bowls of ramen and pho. So. When we came back online, I think part of it was we realized with all the things that had gone on, um, as much as we love breakfast, it's just maybe not enough, you know, to get us through this winter that's coming up. I feel like that's like an understatement for you too, because of <laughs> all the stuff that's going on with the village, I mean, it's like breakfast is now just like a, like a, it's, I don't even know. It's not even like that big of a portion of what you guys are doing now. It's insane. The amount of evolution that you guys have shown. Well, I, we, we appreciate that. I mean, we... Don't get us wrong. We love breakfast. Of course. You know, it put us on the map and we, uh, we still take it very seriously. We have an excellent connection to our coffee and our eggs and, and, and we love it, but we've always wanted to do more, right, Brian? Yeah. Like, yeah. And it, you know, it, you know, having the COVID shutdowns allowed us to kind of be a bit, not as tied to what we were doing previously, but it has, we, we've been able to experiment a little bit and we've had a lot of ideas. You know, there's hours on the phone that we've talked and we've come up with hundreds of different ideas for, you know before COVID. And so now it's kind of, it's given us an opportunity to do a couple different things that we've wanted to try over the years. Yeah. Um, Cause before but, like all the village locations were doing the same thing, right? There wasn't yeah. really a difference now or a difference then, <laughs> but if you look at it now, the locations are all pretty much kind of doing different things, right? They are. Yeah. I think, I think diversity is really important for us right now. Um, obviously it's also a part partially survival here, right? Um, obviously short term, we open for breakfast right now, put a bunch of dividers up, we probably would, would probably do be doing better numbers than what we're doing right now out of here. But for the long term of it, part of what breakfast was always was the vibe, the energy of having that full room that was kind of shaking a little bit and, 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 and everyone's packed in and that that's a part of the experience. I think what we, what we thought about was that, you know, to get through the other side of this thing, we're going to need to do a little bit more and. So there we were kind of just thinking about, okay, well, what are the things that, you know, we like, it almost felt like that Seinfeld episode where George is sitting there and he's like, well, I like baseball. I mean, I play for the Yankees type thing. And we're like, <laughs> we've always wanted to do noodles. You know, Chinatown was always kind of one of those projects that excited us because of the, you know, the origin of being in Chinatown. Mm -hmm. And I think even when we first opened, you know, um, big trouble in little China was the theme. And actually we had a girl here, um, we had a girl here who shout out to Pla, um, who was doing uh, a noodle time kind of delivery of lunch for us. So it's nothing new for us. And what we feel right now is um, Asian food travels really well. It's really good for takeout. And we just kind of wanted to do something different, you know, and I'm not gonna lie, you know, part of it is that it's nice to have food that I want to go out and enjoy with my family in our own spot, mm -hmm. you know, with our own values and, and ethics and sourcing behind that food. And, um, so now, yeah, I think it's, we're, we're, we're sticking to it. We're going to run with it. Did you, you enjoyed your lunch? And to have it be that good though, like that pho, <clears throat> I think it might be my favorite one I've ever had potentially. Amazing. Like yeah, I shout really out, shout out to the rickshaw, you know, we, we, we definitely wouldn't have been able to get to that recipe without their help and their, their guidance. That was definitely, they were, they were the North star keeping us going to the, to the quality for sure. Cause the one thing about that, I, I noticed right away is that it was more of a, like a sweet base in the broth or something, mm -hmm. which I haven't, I don't think I've had that with pho before. Yeah. Well, that's the daikon. I think, uh, that, that they're using in it. And, um, and I think that's just, that's just the fung touch, right? So, mm -hmm. um, the kind of a little background with that is that the first time I almost felt like I had pho was when I went to May's house to have it. And so I actually didn't know May, uh, the, the, um, 
one of our, our best friends now, but I didn't know her. And she actually just, she just invited me over one day. I'd heard through the grapevine that there's this girl out there, her name's Mei Fung, and she makes this incredible pho. And I was like, oh, okay. And sure enough, out of nowhere, this invite comes along from Mei. She's just, and once you get to know Mei, you're going to realize like it's open door policy with her. Like, you know, maybe not so much right now, but uh, <laughs> definitely you go to Mei's when she invites you over for dinner, you can expect like three or four other families there too. It's mm -hmm. not just us. Right. And, uh, and I remember driving to her house and uh, we had met Jesse, her husband prior. Uh, he had actually, he's a photographer. He had shot a wedding, uh, Kirsten's best friend's wedding. Long story short, we're on our way there. And my wife looks at me, we've got our kids in the backseat. And she's like, are you sure about this? Like just going over to some stranger's house to eat pho. And I'm like, well, you know me, I'll do anything to get a good bowl. So, <laughs> but like literally like two seconds with women walking in that hospitality, you want to talk about hospitality, you felt it right away. May son, Coco, him and my kids are really close now. Took the kids to the backyard. They started playing right away. We sat down. There's Appies. Actually, back then, actually, Brian's wife, Jess, was there, who happens to be May, well, one of May's best friends and works with May. And anyways, that night, we ate the pho. They were and friends before? Yeah, the backstory on that, she actually babysat Cohen initially. And then... Kind and who's, of got, who's Cohen? Oh, sorry. Cohen is May's son. Okay. Um, and then so from there, basically, they just... She became a real estate appraiser with May. May was kind of her mentor and now they're yeah, in business together. So, okay. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Long story short, when I ate it, I had the same reaction as you. I was like, I haven't really had it. Like we've, we've had, I've had good pho in this town, but it didn't have that. When I first tasted it, it reminded me of when my grandma used to make me soup mm -hmm. because you know, it's, it's being done with real bones, real seasoning. There's and a you, limit. There's a, there's a they, you don't, you don't it, just right? keep adding water and salt. No, you, you know. said with that, it's got a chicken base, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, this one is chicken. And in fact, you know, the one that I first tasted there was beef and that's probably more what people do. We, we chose chicken in this case because ch local chicken for us right now, it's just a lower hanging fruit. It's easier to produce. It's easier to source than, than beef bones locally from the island. Um, so we chose chicken, which is kind of the less popular uh, soup. Um, so yeah, it was, it was one of those things where when I first ate it, I was like, holy smokes, like it literally took me back to when my grandma used to make me soup. And I was like, and that what's what I learned about it after the fact is that when May does a recipe and even now every batch we're doing here, we're not allowed to serve it until May comes and tastes it. So she has to come and taste <laughs> and season it for half an hour. And May is an ex extremely successful woman. Like she doesn't have a lot of time on her hands, but for us, um, we've been very fortunate how uh, we, we kind of almost look at her like a big sister. She's, yeah. she's really come in and really tried to help us out here. And we, we, we couldn't appreciate it. We really appreciate it. But every recipe has X amount of ounces of broth that we're allowed to serve out. And so if mama Fung ever caught us, you know, like, and that's why that's the thing about this pot, it, it runs out. It's not like, it's just never ending. Mm -hmm. So most soup stocks, a lot of them, I, I imagine, is people will just keep adding water and salt to that bowl. But for us, it's like this stock pot has 30 bowls, which is what you're tasting is that all of the layered and flavor and the complexity of the broth from the charred onion to so on and so forth, right? It's So yeah, it's, it's the real deal. And it's, if you want amazing. more of it, she's got to come try it, make sure the next batch is... She gives her sign off. That's One, right. 100%. Yeah. Like we have, we yeah. right now, we actually have to almost schedule around based upon the availability of this pho, based upon May's very, very busy schedule. <laughs> and so, <laughs> thank you, May. If yeah, you thank ever you listen, so thank much, you. May. Yeah. Thank you. So, pre COVID, this was a thing you were doing at the Estevan location with her, right? That's right. Yeah. So, you know, the, it was one of those things, you know, it just it developed into quite a relationship. And then we ended up meeting her family and so on and so forth. And, it was always a dream of the Fung family to bring this into a restaurant setting. And, you know, people telling you homemade stuff like, oh, your, your pho is really good is, is one thing, you know, will it sell, right? Will it, can it, can it exist in scale? And they did an incredible job. And the, the idea initially was that her family was going to, they're in Vancouver, uh, her, her brother, uh, Chung and, uh, Lan, uh, Chung's wife was actually the one that was the chef, uh, so they're in Vancouver and the idea was this was going to be the business that actually brought them to the island. What was difficult was that they were making the pho in the day while we were serving breakfast at May's house and then bringing all the stuff over to Estevan to do the pop-up for that night. So 
it just wasn't sustainable, even though it was extremely successful. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the success was probably the downfall of it. It also didn't help that Again, May is a very, very successful person. And, and Chung, he's an engineer. <laughs> Next thing you know, these guys are selling a pub for 20 bucks a bowl, like tearing their hair out because it's a tough, difficult industry, right? Yeah. So, so the success ended up going, oh my gosh, like what have we created here? And there just wasn't the space and the, it wasn't the time for it. So now when we were shut down in COVID, kind of full circle, we only had a couple staff members left over here, um, Aaron being the owner and MJ. And I was like, Let's do some noodles. Let's do something that we can we can at least just do takeout only for like with three people. And now it's become hopefully something bigger. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Well, especially if like you've had it, you enjoyed the you know you enjoy the product. I think words and and word of mouth is what what gets our uh, gets people in the door for sure. So yeah, it's insane. If anybody likes pho, you have to come and have that here. Like that's it's just not even an option in my opinion because I haven't had anything like that. Right. I find with pho. A lot of the times you load in the hoisin, you load in the sriracha and you need that extra kind of flavor. I, I don't even touch that with this. It's just- I didn't do anything it, with this. I just ate yeah. it as it came. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing too, is that um, when you get pho here, it's going to come as it is, right? So you don't, we don't give you a bunch of other things that you add on after the fact. It's, it's, it's all measured to- And those crispy the, shallots. And the crispy shallots, yeah, the specification. Are, yeah. Another cool thing, I think, with Asian food, something that we're trying to do, too, is to have access to it at home when you need it the most. For me, that, those late night bowls, you know, I, I've had dinner already. Kids are, kids are in bed. I'm watching TV. I'm still a little bit hungry. I can pull from the fridge. So we're actually doing all of this stuff as kits. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, we are preparing for things that may happen down the line here. So we want people to be able to have restaurant quality food um, in their home all the time and at an affordable price you know you, yeah sorry so. there's there's so much going through my head right now we could touch on yeah because like with covid I, I think you guys were like one of the very first i saw that it shut down voluntarily when everything started started to pop off back in uh back in march mm -hmm. and just the evolution of how quickly you guys adapted because it almost seemed like overnight you're now like a restaurant or a grocery delivery service trying to get things to people that they need to be able to survive at their house well, we're all inside trying to figure this out. Right. And um, it just, you guys have done so much. And I'm wondering if you could sort of touch on like the different things you are doing. Because like you mentioned, you have those uh, meal drops now where every day out of the week, Monday to Friday, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but you have like an, a, a, an assigned meal kit or drop for that night. And people can sign up ahead of time, pre-order, they can come pick it up. And then they make that restaurant quality food at their house. That's right. Yep. And it like the, the work is, there's not really any work to it. Like you guys gave me, um, gave me the, uh, the pasta one last week and I was floored at how good it was. And Thank I you. can't, I can't cook, but it, <laughs> it, it turned out, I was so proud like that, that like, even though you guys prepped it all and I put it together and warmed it up and all that stuff, I felt proud afterwards. Your presentation was, it looks, it looks quite yeah, well. It was really good. Oh, yeah. It was really good. You got, yeah. you got a backup job here. <laughs> Dude, like, but it, so like for me, that was really, that was a different experience for me. Because like I wouldn't have gone out and made that dish necessarily at all, like or anything well, like that. I think that's that's part of what, you know what we've wanted to do is with the instructions, with how it's all assembled, all the prep work's done. You know, we kind of put a easy, medium. We actually haven't had any difficulties yet, but most of them have it's been coming. Easy. I it's can't coming. wait it's coming. to see the difficulty. It's coming, but like easy, you know, ten to fifteen minutes. You can get really when all the work's done beforehand. You all you had to do for that one is heat up the sauce, hold in the olives and the capers, and 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 boil the pasta, which. But you seem to have done quite well. So that, well, that <laughs> so, was so that was a different touch too. The the instructions that you wrote up, like mm -hmm. there was just a, there was a there was some personality in it, right? And it was like kind of like a friend at your house, sort of like this coaching you along in a way. Well, and that's and I, you know I it, was, it was funny when I when I put myself in the mindset of writing those, I was thinking like <laughs> we gotta. Were you high, Brian? No, actually, I've taken a little time off the marijuana <laughs> these days, but uh, <laughs> uh, back on it now. But anyways, so he, um, you know, with hospitality kind of being a little dead. Uh, we, I wanted to have that somebody walking through with personality and, and having like a, uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a Spotify playlist associated with, every, with every meal that we're trying to like, you know, when you're, when you're eating a puttanesca pasta, listen to Italian dinner on Spotify, just like a little touch to try to bring that restaurant into your household. And it, it we were having fun doing it. And I hope that kind of comes through for people that they enjoyed it too. Yeah. I think that's the thing. It's like, um, dinner, family dinner. Or, you know, just preparing dinner for yourself at home sometimes can be a bit of a battle mm -hmm. and really should be a celebration. 
it's it's the one time that you get to either check in with yourself or you get to check in with your kids it's 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 a time to just enjoy mm -hmm. but when you're at the grocery store you're lined up you're battling and then you're home and your kids are crying and you're trying to chop stuff and then on, you know and and by the time you put it together half the time it's 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 mediocre at right. best because of <clears throat> the stress and the strain i think when we kind of started the meal drops and the re and biggest reason why we haven't stopped it is we we're our biggest customer here Mm -hmm. um it's it's been done with with families couples and singles in mind we've just kind of introduced more sizing now and more variability to match different diets but really like in our household and and that's really how you know v unit came about was me brian and kirsten just basically just didn't, didn't want to go line up at the grocery store and we're like well we got all this food here we got all these suppliers that we need to support it just happened organically and now um kirsten for the most part my wife she really doesn't want to give this thing up um, we've tried some of the other, our, you know, some competitors, Fresh Prep and, and you know, uh, what's the other one? Prep Kitchen, prep, not right. Prep Kitchen, sorry. Fresh Prep, Hello Fresh. And one, when the, the ingredients come in the box, it's not a mise en place. There's still a lot of cutting. Cutting is washing, washing, you know, it's not the fun parts of it, right? So we're trying to get it to a point where you've got a sous chef, you've got a prep cook, you get to play chef. Mm -hmm. and that and you still get to actually put that love into your meal for your family without the pain and then once you kind of put that love in it tastes better because it's being prepared fresh versus it being delivered as takeout which is now sat for you know 45 minutes it's still good but mm -hmm. it's not the same as a home-cooked meal because it's coming right off the grill so we're trying to kind of give you let you have your cake and eat it too and I found uh, from the competitors, you know, the stuff shows up in the box. I have no idea where the beef's coming from. I have no idea how old it is. I have no idea when it was prepped, when it was cut, how alive the food is. Mm -hmm. Our meal preps, I mean, they're getting prepped in the morning and they're, they're on your dinner table in 12 yeah, hours. Lettuce comes in that morning. That day, we cut it, right? You know, we cut it that day. It's, you yeah. can't really get much. And you guys are working with local producers, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, as much as we can, 100%, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and that's, always, that's always in the background of all the things that we do. And we do the best that we can with that for sure. But we've also had a lot of help from Cisco. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of help from our own suppliers because they, they have great products as well. And when you're working with scale, um, you need their help just as much as you need the local guy showing up with bedhead off his truck, you know, <laughs> giving you the local produce. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit of both without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a nice hybrid, I think. Yeah. And it's food that we're proud to feed our family. And, um, and yeah, we're going to, we're going to keep rolling with it because, um, yeah, I don't see any end in sight. I, we, we just typed up, you know, 20 more. So, oh, really? We're going to yeah. keep so them coming. A huge catalog. Yeah. We, yeah. Get basically, basically yeah. August is pretty much all planned out where we took a break from the programming today. We were programming on the website this morning and uh yeah so we're gonna basically line out all of august so every 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 week you're not gonna have the same you know example like lasagna and caesar salad with challah bread garlic toast which is a great meal you're that not... garlic toast was so good oh yeah yeah that bread <laughs> oh, katie our, our, our baker she makes that uh fresh on those drops and it's it's, oh, it's, it's a old... and that bread was left over from the brothers that's like a blade brothers village jewish family recipe right o og okay. village and like so yeah before, so before when we, we took, took it over yeah. that we inherited that recipe and then now we're turning into like garlic bread with italian food so it's like you know it's, it's yeah it's, that bread was insane it's got that yeah. nice melting pot yeah. feel to it which is what makes it so good it's because it's got that dense you well, know it's that funny dense too and, and on the uh who was talking the other day the guy uh at the hive jason the, yeah jason was saying that they they use holla they do yeah holla, for the buns. Holla buns which i was like ooh. Ooh, holla buns. Buns. <laughs> Maybe we should yeah, make they, some holla buns. Yeah, the um, Malia makes them down in the bakery there. Right. No way. And they, that's so like that's when they cool. run out of buns, they just walk them up from the bakery and they walk them over to the which the bakery hive. is that? Uh, the cottage bakery. Okay. Which cool. is which is two doors over. Okay. Very cool. It's the same owners as the very as cool. the hive. Right. Yeah, and, and I think that's the other thing is we're not trying to. I think that was the other thing I noticed with um, some of the competitors' menus is they're really going really kind of fancy and not as approachable it's stuff that you know it's it, it, it's great right if that's what you're looking for but i got kids you know we mm -hmm. need we need to put approachable food on the table that everyone can enjoy and i think as we move forward with it our goal actually at chinatown as well is actually turn chinatown into the asian version of that so we're going to be doing asian meal kits asian groceries uh, we've got a really good contact here at fizzgard market so a lot of those authentic sauces and things that we're cooking with um you know, your average person might not necessarily know which one to buy and how to assemble it, how mm -hmm. to use fish sauce in a certain recipe. 
Um, same goes for the recipes we're doing out of, um, out of well, we call it the unit, but it's being rebranded right now as Village X. But I think that's the biggest part is that um, we want it to be approachable. We want it to be food that uh, everyone can eat and we want it to actually span every diet because mom these days doesn't eat the same as dad, doesn't eat the same as kids. Mm -hmm. So how can we assemble a kit that takes care of everyone in that family and everyone gets what they want. And, and we're now able to do that because we've had some time to work it out and not actually be that busy. That's, that's the best thing right now with everything that's going on. Um, some are using the subsidies and the time to make short-term money. We are really using this time right now to plant long-term seeds and systems that actually will give us sustainability. And we have one goal right now, it's to get us and our people out the other side of this thing. That's it. And we, beyond wanting to provide you an, a, be a beautiful place to have brunch, which is always going to be something that we do. Uh, we want to add some essential services and some, some necessary services to our roster to ensure that we make it through the other mm -hmm. side, for sure. That's yeah. our priority right and now. And so you're going to have, I mean, obviously right now, the meal prep stuff or meal kits, the drops are coming yep. out of the Cook Street location. Yep. So you're saying that you're going to have ones like, like multiple ones per day, like some come from here, or will it be... Will it still just be one a day split, but split between? It's going to change. I think it's going to evolve based upon the demand. You know, that's the other thing too right now. Um, the village, like we're, we're here to serve, you know, we're here to provide hospitality. We're here, here to feed people. Um, you let us know what you want. You vote, you vote by purchasing. And mm -hmm. if you need a, a bigger menu, great. If mm -hmm. you like the smaller menu, great. If you need more keto stuff, great. We're, we're open. We're ready to go. So right now, um, and, and Cook Street right now, we've actually kind of dipped our toe into kind of more of that fast food space. So in combination with the groceries and the meal drops, all that fresh produce wasn't translating that well as brunch. So instead, we've now kind of got a bowls, bowls, mm. wraps, toast concept that's all grab and go. Um, much like what our, our, our friends there at um, Nobu are doing up at the Cube uh, in an Asian fashion, we're doing it in any fashion yeah. really we just just fresh ingredients we we, we look at what's what's there um nate nate and katie are doing a great job duskin's doing a great job and they just they look at what the what's coming out of the farms they pick a dressing they add some acid some crunch boom full so yeah it's, it's exciting stuff and, and we hope to do the same here at, at chinatown but from an asian version of it so yeah yeah like Good. that chicken adobo you just had basically you'd get the chicken would be already kind of pre cooked uh it would be braised then you'd also have the the sauce ready to go the rice would just so, so it's similar concept of basically just not take and bake but you know within 15 minutes you're getting restaurant quality food at your house so it's uh it's, it's been a fun side project which is actually developed into like the main thing that we're almost doing right now through a lot of this is that reinventing how we're thinking about food from a way of putting it you know cooking it fresh for the guests right away, putting it on a plate, watching them enjoy it, to re, you know, rethinking about the cookery of it. So, so once you reheat it at home, uh, it, you're still getting that good, that that you know, good quality. So it's been interesting. You know, we've come up with some things with rice, how to cook rice quick at home. You know, we've 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 pre cooked it, put it in uh, put it in vacuum sealed bags, and then you just dip it in boiling water for eight minutes, and actually comes out like fluffy amazing beauty if you have some nice seasoning in there so th there's been some kind of fun things that we've done along the way to try to bring convenience to people's house because that's really important that we want to be 15 minutes we want you to be able to put together a you know restaurant quality food for your family so so has it made you think then about like food differently because now you're thinking about how can we do this in a way that someone could do it at their house in an efficient manner that they're going to have a good quality result. Has it, has it reframed anything in your head? Not, not really. It's, it's what we've always done. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's what the restaurant industry does. Yeah. You know, it, there's a mise en place, right? Um, not everything is being cooked live, like to order, right? right? A lot of the stuff is pretty much halfway there or cut or For ready, speed. ready to go. Yeah. Right. And, and without losing the quality of, a, of a cook from scratch, freshly prepared meal. Right. And in fact, it's gotten so far the other way that most of that stuff is now coming off Cisco. It gets defrosted and then heated and, and away you go, which is now thank, thankfully the industry has dialed that back and we found a happy medium there that we're able to do both. So really that mind is just, it's just my mind, mind you taking that from the restaurant now into just a smaller quantity, a smaller scale, different packaging, 
mm-hmm. but really the same process that we do on our line. We're just basically setting up your line for you at home, yeah. giving you a set of instructions. Soon, hopefully, we'll maybe do some videos and whatnot. Um, and then TikTok. TikTok. Right? <laughs> Shout out Chinese spying company. Yeah. Uh, I've lost my wife to that thing. <laughs> yeah, she's oh, crazy. On, she's on TikTok you, all the time. You open like, that yes, app, it's just, the next two hours are gone. Oh, yeah. dude, it's <laughs> yeah. crazy. But uh, yeah, so we, I think our biggest fear, and I, I remember when we closed our doors on um, March 16th there, I remember it felt like, you know, that last episode of Friends or Seinfeld. Mm. And I remember my business partner, Barry, going, holy fuck, man, is this the end? Yeah. And I'm like, for what we've been doing for the past seven years, maybe, you know, like in terms of like, not us as a business, but a jam packed, busy, shaking restaurant that serves only breakfast. Um, that magic, you know, that hospitality of that busy room, you know, people aren't going to want that for a little bit. Well, obviously some people in this town still love it, which yeah. is great. Shout out to them, by the way, you go <laughs> yeah. live your life. I love it. But, uh, you know, from our perspective, we felt like how can we capture what has made us successful and what people love about us? How can we bring it into their home? Because mm-hmm. I've always been fascinated uh, myself with uh, fast food. Anyone that knows me knows I love a hot bag. And I've always been fascinated with eating at home. Like I love good takeout, right? But I don't love takeout. I love good, ta- you know what I mean? So it's like the only good takeout really that's available sometimes. It's, it's Asian food, um, Ban Thai, one of my favorites, 100% it travels really well it eats good cold it eats good hot and pizza other than that it's not that much out there um that uh, it's not that they're doing a bad job or whatnot but there's really not that much out there you know even when you go on doordash and stuff it's all food that's meant to be eaten in the restaurant that then they package up and bring to your house but it's not really designed to travel it's not really designed to eat the same as it was in the restaurant and i think that's the gap right yeah. now that we're trying to fill and it's not because um, of anything more than, you know, it is about survival for us a little bit. So well, it let's makes it easy. take that pasta, for example, we could cook mm-hmm. that in the restaurant, mm-hmm. package it up. It'd be put in a box that it would sweat. It'd be hot. It'd be a little condensation would develop. It would solidify. You'd get it home. You'd open it up. You'd slop it out. It would all come out in one big chunk That's on right. your plate. And, and so and it'd, it'd still be okay. It'd still be okay. It'd be good. But it'd I mean, be a six out of 10. You know, if you and know. it'd be edible. And because it's takeout, yeah. you accept these deficiencies because you're like, oh, it's takeout. But if, but you, can, if you can boil well, yeah. water and you That's can right. heat up sauce, right. why don't we, you know? So it kind of, it, it was really a natural progression that kind of led to this point. But I was blown you know. away though by the size, like the amount of food, like the, the value for the dollar, I felt was pretty crazy. Cause like I eat a lot of food, yeah, and that was over yeah, three meals. We saw that today, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> but dude, that that meal was over three meals for me, right? Like that's that's like five normal people or something, yeah. That's that's a lot. I think that for us to, um, and we are working on portioning right now a little bit to be able to bring the price down for those that don't eat as much. Mm-hmm. But I think part of dinners and what makes really good dinners successful, I love good leftovers, of course. And I think your average person, if you can make your family a great dinner. And then mom and dad have mom, dad, maybe the kids. I know for us, when we make dinner, we make the kids lunch the next day as well. Right. So we'll make our dinner and then the kids, you know, my wife just she's so smart, right? You know, she, she's going to do the prep one time, then she's got the dinner. And then the next day she sends the kids with their entree and then like bolsters it with some fruit and some snacks. So our goal with this is to synthesize what you would actually do in your home, not get it to the point where it's portioned out so little that you don't everyone's fighting over that last potato. That's not the goal. And maybe that's probably why some of our pricing has come out and it looks maybe more expensive and it's misleading. And I think that's what we're working on next with yeah. our, we've, we've got our website in the works right now where it's actually really going to show you um, not only the amount of ingredients, but how many of each thing you could make and all the different ways you could actually plate it. Like as an example, last night we had the, uh, had the barbacoa taco Barbara, drop yeah. and we gave a bag of romaine and greens with it and it had probably 10 different taco toppings, which at home you're not going to do for yourself. And it would take you to do the knife work Katie can do. It would take you hours, right? Yep. Um, you know, now it's all there you just make your taco, but you can make a salad after you can put it into a wrap after you could put it on a bowl of rice after. And those, those things live in your fridge and the containers we give you, they fit perfectly. They're just like a restaurant. So now the next day you could make yourself an awesome breakfast taco, or you could have an awesome salad. Everyone, it's whatever their tastes are now can use the mise en place from the night before 
Mm -hmm. and have a meal. So I say most of these meals, even though like if we say it feeds four to six, the reason we say that is it definitely feeds four. Oh, easily. And, and yeah, definitely yeah. gives four two meals. Yeah. And that's our goal, right? Our goal is to make it so like you can have it on several days and eat it multiple times. And now we've actually made it where you can have a size that feeds two to three. Yeah. And that's Which just, would have been, that's just, that's a Dallas and that, size. And, that's a, well, yeah. you know, and maybe four to six, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four to six, four to but, six. But, but like, honestly, like when I look yeah. at like the amount of food there was not even counting the, the amount of time saved or any, anything of that, just the amount of food, it was a good deal. I felt with that, that pasta for what you're charging for it. So, good. well, and that's, that's exactly what we're wanting yeah. to get across. Yeah. And then, you, then you factor in the, the time, not going to the grocery store. Exactly. You know, it, it, it there's a lot, to, yeah, it's been a really we feel that we found a good niche here and that it's, it started out as kind of, you know, a necessity, but now it's become like, this is actually, you know, something that we're really passionate about and that there is a, there's definitely a market for it. And, and, and having, you know, we were working, I think with 24, 25, 26 about different meal drops right now. We have from a consumer's point of view, they, there's a lot of options. So you could basically every single almost every night of the the month you'd, you'd be looking at a different combination of salad and main which is you know that that, that it is nice when you're feeding the same people and they're like oh mom i don't want the same thing again you know every every night in my family it was wednesday was like chow mein night you know and then it was like taco night but it, so, so it's it's nice to have variability for sure shout out to the chow mein we just had at lunchtime here Chow mein was sick. Chow mein, Ming's, yeah, yeah. big time. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the that's the yeah. Ming's that's the Ming's chow mein right there, man. Yeah. That was so good because yeah. yeah, it wasn't that's greasy. Old school. Yeah, it wasn't greasy. It was it was just clean. Like I felt good afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, I think chow mein. Uh, I don't know something about this town. They just like those thick chow mein noodles. Uh, Ming's always use kind of the thinner egg noodles. They always um, a Chinese is gan tao. It means it's like a, it's like a dry fry like it's not it's not greasy it's real hot oil um and yeah the boy the boys have a good really good cook on it i mean it makes sense aaron's the aaron's the heir to mings so that that oh, makes really? a lot of, yeah he yeah. is yeah so you know that makes a lot of sense that and i think that was the other thing you know mj's back there aaron's back there mj in covid every single night was cooking going off the rails just on his own just 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 pure passion right and then aaron came in and once we got them uh the rickshaw Oh man, it was it was a crazy application process with Mama Fung to to, to allow her to allow us to, what does to that, do that. What does that fun. process look like? That process looks like uh, a start. You got to start by uh, getting in touch with May, and then May has to wait for the right time for Mama Fung to be in a good mood, and then we gave Mama Fung a real good story. Yeah, right. And she just wanted to make sure that uh, we didn't bastardize the recipe, and she wanted to make sure that if her name is on something it better tastes like it came off of her hands, which I'm pretty proud of the, these boys. Thank you for May's help. But um, no, they're, they, they've taken it to heart. And I'll be honest, you know, COVID is, uh, it's been a, just looking at some of the, looking at the owner here, Aaron, you know, it was, it was a tough time for him. And when he started cooking that broth and they were just cooking back there together and then, and then Julia came on, you could feel that passion in that life. And that's part of why we ended up going this route easy thing to do is just open for brunch we would be the most socially distanced breakfast restaurant downtown you, could, you wouldn't you know it, it'd be great right and we will get there and we are working on that but when nearing the end here like you know breakfast it, it didn't have that same just didn't have that same passion that i saw coming off of covid that i was like we gotta explore this we, we, we shouldn't let mm -hmm. this passion die and i think that was another thing about value it's like I know over the next couple years, five years, six years, 10 years, it's gonna be some tough times here, man. I think we're just, you know, not doom and gloom, but we've only scratched the surface of this $200 billion we printed. Yeah. I think we're gonna need some, we're gonna need some stomach filler, you know, some, 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 some peasant food to get some of us through it. You can't eat every meal, $20 eggs, Benny. Mm -hmm. um, although, you know, a lot goes into that Benny. We've always, I think Brian, I've always, uh, always been so grateful for people understanding the value of what we put on a plate, you know, 17, 18 bucks for a breakfast. Like, shit, I always say, you know, my, my old man always said to me, he goes, you wait, Jason, when that $20 hamburger comes out, it's going to kill the industry. And I'm seeing $20 hamburgers out there now, <laughs> they right? Exist. Oh, yeah. I mean, they I've exist. Seen, I've seen almost they a $30 hamburger. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And they're fantastic. Yeah. Don't get oh, me course. wrong. They're, they're, they're amazing. But, you know, I, I am, we have always had a mandate to feed the community. And we've always excluded a little bit with our offerings. 
due to the fact that we use very high quality ingredients. But when you charge 17, 18 bucks for a Benny, you're excluding people. I don't care what it, you know, and we don't want to do that. And that's why I think with these meal drops, our goal is to make it accessible to everybody because we, we want to feed as many people as we can. And we want our farmers to reach as many people as they possibly can. And you don't have to go to some place that is a hundred dollar check average to eat farm fresh organic food. It should be accessible to everybody. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I really appreciate about you guys is that you're, I mean, you always are supporting local in Victoria, but e further than that, each of the locations seem to be really in like supporting of the community directly around that location. Cause I think with the Torquay location, which shout out to the, to Brian and the village in general, because the very first segment that, um, that Mike and I did when we were on CFAX was we came and interviewed you That's right. and talked with you. Yeah. And that was almost four years ago to the day right now there you go. that that happened. And I think at that time, does your mom live nearby the Torquay location or somebody does? My, my mom. Your yeah. Mom, oh, your yeah, mom yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. I, grew, I, grew, okay. I grew up literally like a stone's throw, uh, a pitching wedge on a good day, I'd like to say. But and what was your first job, Brian? Mount Egg Market. Yeah. Right. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I worked there for seven years. And it's funny because it, like I used to slice honey ham and the owner would come and say, oh, slice honey ham for the day. And then when with V-Unit, we got honey ham in and I put the honey ham on the slicer and I started slicing it. I'm like, <laughs> well, boom, that was the, that was the funny you know? thing. Like when we converted from a restaurant to a grocery store within 48 hours, yeah. all of a sudden, Brian had all these like crazy, he's like, no, no, this is how we do this. And I was like, holy shit, man. He's yeah, like, man, the, Mount Dog Market. Yeah, it's it's so his market experience. Oh, and that's yeah. what made it so cool. He's like, it's just all started coming out of him, right? Yeah. And uh, and yeah, the Mount Dog Market side of Brian, from how we break down boxes to how we store <laughs> things to yeah. how, you know, we learned so much about food, doing the groceries, like just even changing the temperature of avocados makes them go brown sooner type stuff. Right? Yeah. Stuff separate, that we didn't know. Se we, didn't, we knew, well, but we didn't know, you know, yeah. like not to the point where we were now getting complaints and because we weren't, we don't just brush complaints off to the side. We chase, we, we trace that complaint right down to the root of the issue, which stuff, stuff we were talking about today. So we've learned a lot even about how to store food yeah. properly. That's one thing I like about you alive. guys yeah. is that you seem very, my, my, um, the way I see you guys is that you want feedback. Oh yeah. That's yeah. one thing like with Brian, you've always asked me like, mm -hmm. what do you think about this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it just, you always want that feedback to see how you can improve that. That's my interpretation. And it's really funny too, because, you know, being in the restaurant industry, you, you said this early on with the, with the meal drops. I mean, we, in, in, in traditional restaurant setting, you serve the food, you see their face, you get feedback, then you collect the money where they're now doing the grocery store and, and, the, and the meal drops, you, it goes through online, vunit.ca, little plug. Uh, but uh, you collect the money first, deliver the food, and then there's literally no feedback, right? Because you don't get to check in with them. So it, it was really interesting to, to kind of move to that model. So we're really trying to like, you know, we want feedback on these. We have a, we, we want to hear people's uh, opinions through our website or sort of through our uh, email and everything. So it's definitely like, I think in our industry, we need feedback because we, you know, we are, we're always putting forward what we think is the best, right? We always, all of our love goes into that plate. And, you know, I hear all the cooks say that, of course, every single plate they put together, they want that to be the best thing that person has eaten that day. And then, so if, to adjust and to make little, if, if, you know, if everybody has the same opinion about a dish, we're, we're not tied to it. You know, we're, we're, we're in the, we're in the business of pleasing people. So we are, you know, we do have our, some passion behind some things that cannot change, <laughs> but a lot of them, like, you know, we're, we're, we're open to, to feedback for sure. Especially your feedback, Dallas. No, I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. Well, I, I do think too, this, um, this meal kit grocery kind of and, and so yeah. just for clarity for yep. me yeah so it was v unit and but now it's moving to v village x village is what x. we're going to call it so yeah. it's trans so that's going to be the new name but it's the same thing that's yeah. right 100%. okay yeah, and the x it, it couldn't stay v, v unit forever <laughs> v, Which, v, v unit came about as funny because like literally the <laughs> shutdown was like crazy like we're on the full it was very stressful time shutting down you know no it wasn't stressful not at all, all no, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know but uh we're on the phone and we're like, well, we have a small crew of people that, 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 that want to work. Right. We had, we had to, for the most part, we had to lay everybody off, but there was a small crew and we're like, well, it's like the village response unit. 
V unit. And we're like, Ooh, V unit, G unit, you know, yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and, 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 and they're and just it, like, boom. And it's been hilarious. Yeah. Right. But that's one thing about your guys' branding though, because all the, like the t-shirts you come up with, like the Wu-Tang inspired one, the golden state warriors, right. You guys, you got like, you have my favorite branding in the city. Oh, that's, that's, that's this guy. That's Jason. No, no, that's Jason. Just, it's, like, it's like that that's urban. Just, that's just weed, man. That's just the toad. <laughs> the toad. Yeah. Like Open the, the third eye, man. It's a toad. But like that, that, that urban, more cultured kind of aspect and, and tying that in and coming up with your own original stuff. I think it's a blast. Like it's great. It's, it's just straight up, you know, honestly, it's just who we are. And yeah. uh, like we, that Golden State Warriors shirt. When I saw that, I'm like, I need that. Do, yeah. do you know the story behind this shirt? No, I don't know any did of the you, stories. Did you watch the uh, the Jordan documentary? This, it's, oh it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, when I don't want to, I don't want to butcher the story. But when he came back, it was when he came back after. Was it after his retirement? After his no, his dad died. His dad died. So after he, right. he won three championships, his dad died, and then he uh, he was so shook in. And, and he was already kind of beefing with the Chicago franchise and the general manager. And so he walked away from the game. And, uh, and when he came back into the game in the playoffs and almost single-handedly made it, made them make the playoffs the next season or some, some story like that, he came back with a different jersey number, which was 45. So we've now got a village shirt. Because we're now. back. You know, we're kind back, of yeah. after, after, after time. with, with the COVID. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, man, it's uh, the branding stuff just – it's it's honestly it's it's the fun part for sure mm -hmm. right and it and it's who we are and uh we don't uh we don't think too much of it we just we just throw it out there and yeah. and it just seems to happen so yeah it's great and so if we're looking at sort of the v unit do you have more plans for that moving forward like is there stuff that's in the, in your mind that you want to move towards that you haven't done yet yeah well i mean the reason we have to change the name is because v unit doesn't really tell people what we do mm -hmm. it it made sense at the time i think it was a cool branding thing we did a lot of 50 cent songs and it was it was great for what it was but i'm like if this thing is going to have some legs we're probably going to need to name it something that we uh that that speaks more to what we do so it's village x which is village village express right mm -hmm. it's an express model of what we do and at cook street right now the the express of it is that it's all grab and go uh, there's no plates. It's all counter service. It's our fast. It's our kind of foray into fast food, and then getting it out the door and into your home. And uh, Village X is a model uh, that we're very proud of, but we're very excited about because not only do I think this might be the future for us, but I think all restaurants that that have a great product, I would encourage them to take a similar approach. Um, and and I've seen this. I've seen this happen now whether it be from um, when, one of my favorite ramen places in uh, Calgary, one of, actually one of my favorite ramen, maybe my favorite ramen in the world, honestly. Uh, a guy named Koki does, uh, does ramen in um, Calgary. It's called Shiki Menya. And he does ramen kits. And every time he puts them out, he sells them out. And that was, that was how he did his bowls. He started at 50 bowls. Once he sold those 50, he made moved to 100. Now he only does 150 a day. He's a lineup around the block. And when they're gone, they're gone. And now he's doing that with kits. And what I would encourage all restaurant restaurateurs to do now, as we look into the winter, obviously everyone's busy trying to work summer, but I would happily buy a brasserie burger kit as an example. You know what I mean? Everyone in this town has something that's so special. And I think that instead of constantly, you know, we should compete with each other and that's a part of what we do and we support each other. And, but you know, there's a big market there in groceries. You know, that's the bottom line. And, and, and they can certainly spare 20% 20, 20 of that market, you know, thrifties and these big conglomerates. Like, I just feel for me, it's, it's for this company, uh, I, I think that's, that's low-hanging fruit. It's easy, you know, Go, going after that market right now for us makes a lot more sense than fighting jam for, for, for bacon and eggs. Mm -hmm. um, and I would strongly encourage uh, more more businesses to to adapt this model, especially as we head into winter, because sometimes it doesn't work as takeout, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of work to do takeout because you're still going to need a cook, so your your costs are pretty much the same. Um, but to prep your mise en place and put it in a box and put put some cool instructions and be able to connect with your guests and put that, you know, I would encourage anyone to do, everyone to do that. I mean, that, could you imagine if you Nobu know, started doing little sushi kits? I mean, people would love it. You know, all the especially when you're known when you're known for some of those sauces. That's when we totally. noticed it. Like totally. it really took off when we put our, our drop three hot sauce, our curry balsamic dressing, mm. our pico de gallo stuff like, that you can yeah, only those buy sauces from are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff that like that's what we're kind of known for, right? That's why we have these chefs that are talented. They can make mm. those sauces, and 
you know, you can, you can buy a, a craft salad dressing at the grocery store. You can't buy a village curry balsamic there. So it was kind of once we, once we made that connection and we're like, ah, the light bulb kind of went off. Well, right. And it was like, okay, and, well, and let's... I think at first when we first started V unit, we weren't trying to replace the grocery store. You're never going to do that. No. And we have a lot of allies that, you know, shout out to Red Barn, like, you know, Russ Nash, you know, good, good buddies of ours. But uh, we had no, ch we, we adopted to kind of become a grocery store simply because of the lineups and people couldn't get groceries at the time. There was a feeding frenzy. So we wanted to kind of just do our part at the beginning. That's what it was. We just wanted to do our part for the community and just keep the wheels turning for our mm -hmm. team, our village response unit that wanted to work. But what we realize now in perpetuity to have, to be able to complement the grocery store, you're always going to go to Red Barn, buy your stuff, right? Whatever it is, you're always going to probably make that Costco run once, once a year or twice a year to buy all your toilet, whatever it is. Right. But yeah, there's stuff that we do. And typically a lot of restaurants, what they've done, whether it be Eugene's or whatever, you have a, a hummus that knocks it out of the park, then you wholesale it. Well, why wholesale it when you can sell direct? doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. Right. So just do it yourself. Right. And so now like, yeah, our curry from our curried balls dressing, all the things that we do that you love. And I think we're going to probably work on hollandaise, yeah. you know, because when we got a little trick for that too, yeah. you can have your own hollandaise at home. I don't yeah. know if we're ready to give that really? away, but yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. But so all the stuff on the stuff on the way, there's stuff, stuff on the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and so we're kind of just, we're working through it all right now. Um, it's tough, man. It, you know, temptation is to grab money always yep. in business, right? It's, uh, you see the lineups out there and it, it pains me sometimes to drive around town and I'm selling noodles out of a breakfast restaurant and the breakfast restaurants are busy, but you know, long-term we have to stay focused on what we believe in. And I, I think that's how much of a challenge is that to not give in to sort of what you can see right in front of you, but keep your eye on the, like the long-term uh, play. I think, well, partnership helps for that. <laughs> you know, it does like, like, like keep check, each other in check, check, keep each other in check big yeah. time, you know, like, because for example, I wanted to gravitate back to uh well, a good example when we took over Bubby's, um, Bubby's kitchen in cook street, you know, it, it was our plan to kind of operate it as Bubby's kitchen, which had different sourcing, different standards, different menu, different recipes, all that. But as operating there, you know, I was kind of like, you know, I feel, I was saying to Jay, I'm like early days. I'm like, I feel a lot more comfortable switching over to the village and the way that we do things. Cause I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Right. So the, the intention I, there was not to turn into a village. Well, well per se. I mean, that, 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 that's a whole other three hour conversation. That okay. <laughs> but, but not Which, really, like, honestly, yeah, and I mean, that dinner service you guys were doing there, like I, for me, it didn't make, it didn't feel like you guys should be able to do dinner that well. When you had breakfast, you do as well as you do. Thank you. Like that Thank quickly, you. that change. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah. It, that, that, that one was one of those ones where we, we obviously were in the process of expansion. We had looked at a lot of leases. We had looked at a lot of properties, a lot of deals. And when that one came across, you know, but you know, it's one of those things looks too good to be true. It usually is type stuff. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've, we've had some challenges in that space because we, we are, we were trying to do in that space that was unnatural. It was going against the grain of that space. I think we're now in flow there mm -hmm. and I think it's going to change things a lot. It is counter service. That's, that's what that model, unless we renovate the space, that's what it's meant to do. Yeah. Um, I think our landlord has become a, a, a touch more reasonable with his expectations on, on what he should, he should do there. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward now for sure. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's funny too, like, it is tough though, man, every single day. And, and you, anyone that knows me knows I like to change my mind a lot because I'm very value oriented and I obviously just want to maximize things for everyone, you know, for this company. But, um, actually this morning, listening to, uh, uh finishing the podcast that you did with, uh, the boys at, um, uh, Nobu. Nubo, Nubo, <laughs> every time, every Just time, like, Nubo, um, uh, Nubo. Yeah. Nubo, every time. But um, yeah, shout out to Mike and Anton. Just, totally. So they're across the street. Yeah, we, maybe we right have now. A drink well, we're going to go have a drink there after. But what Mike said today, uh, and I actually replayed it ten times, was have some consistency and give things time to set. Don't, don't just change the direction especially if you're passionate about something and that and that goes for noodles right like i said the other day i came in here i had an incredible bowl of pho with some wonton it was awesome and then when i drove out of here like i said right I drove by jam i always do the drive right they're busy right we had done maybe four tables that day you know here 
Um, we had some meal drops or whatever at night, but still wasn't the same. And I drove by Ruby, you know, shout out to those boys. They were busy. And I was like, geez, you know, should we just, just go back to brunch? Right. But it's, it's so yeah, temptations there mm -hmm. every day. Right. To, to, but, you but know. the thing is people can still come in here. You can come and eat here. Yep. Yeah. All the, all the locations are open, right? They That's are right. hundred percent. And, and we are, and we're yeah. operational and actually brunch, brunch is me. Brunch is coming back here soon. Um, it was our first weekend of brunch last, last, last weekend yeah, here exactly, in Chinatown. So. Right? Okay. But yeah, believe it or not, noodles are just easier. Like they're less staff, right? Um, our brunch that we do, it's difficult. Like just to get those latkes on your plate at 8 a.m. There's a guy here making them fresh at 5 a.m. So just to offer latkes on the menu for us daily, it's two hours of a premium person's prep. Mm -hmm. just, just to offer the latkes. Never mind all the other stuff that we have to prep and all the other stuff we have to do, not to mention... You know, so breakfast always seems like it's this like easy, greasy spoon thing to do, but it's not, it's challenging. And then on top of it, breakfast, I, what we are finding is, um, you know, on one plate, there's four or five elements of modification that, you know, that require the server's attention, right? So it's what we do best. It's what we know. It's what has brought us all of our success. But honestly, like bringing back five locations online to do our style of breakfast. That task was pretty daunting, I think, for Brian yeah. and I, which is part of why we went this route. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people in this town that are like, what are they doing, right? Why don't they just sell their brunch and, and, and be done with it? But I hate, it's not that easy. There's you know? a lot of moving pieces to mm -hmm. it. You know, I've, I've said a lot of times through the closure, it took us seven years to open up five restaurants. Yeah. And then it, it was funny how the, how the government basically, they, they gave us like a week. They said, okay, restaurants can open, you know? And, and so it was within, we, we basically the under the gun to feel like we had to open up five restaurants. And that's a daunting task from rehiring to retraining. Everything's new. How much sleep did you guys get that week? Uh, <laughs> Oh, that week I slept great. I mean, I'd say the first uh, month of the, the the shutdown, I didn't sleep very well. Yeah, yeah. We, were, we were pretty busy. Yeah, but it was you know what I I, I was saying to Brian like I felt pretty alive. Mm -hmm. Um, I I love it. You know, I, isn't it, it interesting how when you do when there can be pressure put on you, even though yeah. you might not ask for it. Yeah, when you're in the thick of it and you're just you're like in a flow state almost, and you're just mm -hmm. going and not really thinking about what you're doing, you're just mm -hmm. doing it. Yeah, there's something magical about that. I think. Yeah, um, for sure. Like. Definitely, I, what I've said to Brian, survival for me is way easier than maintaining lifestyle, maintaining business, expanding, trying to create constantly to add is way harder than when your back's against the wall and you just got to bite down on your mouthpiece and just get through whatever it is you have to get through. And that's, and, and that, and that's how I feel right now. I'm the same way. I, yeah. I, I do better in that mode because I, totally. I almost get out of my own way. And I'm just like, we just have to go. It's one yeah. direction. Yeah. And you're, you're just following yeah, what's in your heart. Yeah. yeah. hundred percent. You just go. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So like, if we look at the village, um, cause there is five locations, like you mentioned, what, what has been the history? What's been the trajectory from the start? Like, how did this all start? Oh, <laughs> I <don't, laughs> well, I guess, so, uh, yeah. Real, ahead. real, sorry, real full circle here. We'll go, we'll go real quick. I was actually working on a project to buy Ming's restaurant, which okay. we talked about today, yep. which is the chow mein we have here now. I'd raised some money. I'd brought in a bunch of partners and I kept running into roadblocks um, in, in building that restaurant out. And one day I was walking my dog, Boogie. Rest in peace, Boogs. She's Missy Boogs. Rest in peace. She's, uh, she's right there on the wall. Rest in peace, Boogie. I lived in Oak Bay at the time. I walked by the village and at the time I didn't have a job. I was working on this project and I was like, you know, I got a, I got a young daughter at home always seen the lineup Roz has at Blue Fox. I've always loved breakfast and I'm, I'm a big breakfast guy. And I was like, why don't I just do something like that? As I walk by the village, go home, Google business for sale in Victoria, swear on my dead grandmother's life, village pops up. I meet my business partner, Barry there at the time, my uncle, he was going to be the chef of Ming's and we were working on Ming's together. And I'm like, Hey, come look at a restaurant with me. You got any, you got a weird, interesting little idea here. Went down to the village and I'm like, I love it. Fidel was the uh, realtor. We bought it. My, and first thing Barry said to me, is like, ah, it's not enough meat on these bones for us, man. It's 30 seats. What are we doing? I'm like, no, no, believe me. Like breakfast places, they turn over. You can do like 150 covers out of a 30 seater, right? You know, later, 300 covers later, but whatever. But it's like half an hour later, we bought it. Um, six months later, I met Brian. Uh, Brian was young. He, he, He's like, I love what you guys are doing. He pushed us to open the second location. 
Um, we had no business opening a second location at the time. Which we, one was the second? Was it Torquay? Royal Oak. Royal, Royal Oak. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we totally winged it. And um, how far into this stage was that? A year. A year. So, yeah. so, year of so it, I think I came on in 2012 because mm -hmm. I was working at uh, Prime Steakhouse back when I met Jason. Okay. Um, Shout out Billy. Yeah, Billy, what up? You golfing, bro, or what? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, was working there, met because Jason and Barry came in and they were talking business plans at the bar and through mutual friends, we knew each other, but then the kind of a connection was made there and, and just started talking and, um, Brian, I think Brian brought my buddy's girlfriend for a date to mm -hmm. Estevan. Mm. And then, uh, you mm. know, things went, things, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. things, things went from there, but, uh, no, it was like it, he pushed us to open the second one. And so that was, was 2013. That was 2013. Is when we opened yes. Royal Oak. Yes. Okay. So we were basically, I came on in 2012. Yeah. I was do, working at Prime, or sorry, uh, Belmiro's at night and working at uh, the village during the day, doing the, the good old open and close days. Um, that was sweet. He would open and uh, he'd, he'd open, he'd work till like 4 or 4.30 and then he'd, he'd go have a shower or whatever. And then he'd go back to uh, Belmiro's until 2, 3 in the morning. And I remember saying to Brian, I'm like, no, man. I'm like, you're going to be doing working with us. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if you can be working till three in the morning. If you don't this, show, if this you don't you show up do, at a hundred percent. No, yeah. no, after, no, after tired, late, right? of course. But, and, and it was funny because it's one of those, uh, I remember the decision to leave night service, which was, which, you know, that was what I was really passionate about at the time was cocktails, expensive wine, higher check average i liked the kind of flair and and the money and, and and the tips of it right you know when you're serviced there there is a flair at it at night that you can really put on a bit of a show and um i loved that part of it but then when i came over to the village it was more of a you're serving the same people but they just feel like they're more real can't explain it like you're not you're not putting on a show at night it's just you're coming in for bacon and eggs in the morning having a coffee starting your day I would have great conversation with them. And I, I fell in love more with the realness of the daytime where before I was getting out of bed at 11, 11 o'clock and it would be, it would be, you know, after a big night and it would just be more of, I didn't even know what mornings were about. But then once I, once I kind of became a more of a breakfast person, I realized, oh, mornings are actually quite beautiful. Sunrises are quite beautiful. You know, it's amazing, right? It's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's, I'd, I'd take it over a late night any day. Yeah. But, um, so well, yeah. except for once in a while. Oh, once, in a while. once in a while. Yeah, once in a while. A couple late nights here and there. Um, but then, um, yeah, I can't remember where I was going with that. But basically, it was, uh, you know, decided that late nights and breakfast at the same time, doing them uh, didn't work out. So left, uh, left the night thing. It was a tough decision. Came on full time for breakfast. Um, and then once I was actually getting a good sleep, I think Jason could, <laughs> Jason and Barry saw how passionate I could be and how hard I could work about it, uh, you work at it. And then, you know, it was a bit more of me saying, all right, I want, I was, I was 29 at the time and I wanted a little bit more in life and saw how much people really loved the food and really loved the, the service model. And I was thinking, you know, Jay, we can, we can do this again. Like we can, we can hit copy paste on this. I'm pretty sure. And, uh, it was a lot more difficult to copy paste than, than I, than I thought, especially another four times. I mean, yeah. you know, to, to Brian's <laughs> credit though, like he, it's come a long way from when he first worked for us and he's, he's been a huge part of the evolution of what we've, what we've become and what we've done. And, um, cause over the five spaces, there's a bunch of different owners, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's evolved. Uh, I think we've evolved yeah. with the business. You know, well, I would, I would, I would almost, yeah. I would hope so. Like in, it seems like you guys really want to evolve. You're always looking for what can we do better? Mm -hmm. How can we evolve? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even if you're not necessarily looking for it, it's just going to happen just because of that mindset. Yeah. Well, in fact, we actually have, um, one of our, our biggest, biggest acquisitions lately in terms of good village people has been, um, Adele who we actually have someone, um, on the village crew now that is in charge strictly of our people and culture. Mm. Um, so we, Brian and I have removed ourselves. Some people like to call it HR, but recruitment is such a small part of what she does, you know, and um, growth and development is, is, is number one on her priority of list. So she's coaching all of us to be better. I love and, that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important. I think we also noticed that in this business, um, 
there's a lot of depression, man. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of stress and there's a lot of feeling of, um, it's dead end, you know, yep. um, that's been the overall kind of uh, tone and it doesn't need to be that way. Um, we, we are the longest standing business. I think restaurants, food business as a whole is, is, is one of the biggest in the world period from market share standpoint where people park their money. And I think we all matter, you know, hospitality business really does matter. And I think that for us, we, um, now that we have someone that focuses our conversations mm -hmm. and, um, you know, she's only been on with us for a month, but already just, just, you even, can already see like tell the difference. Well, just even yeah. the way I'm talking right now, you know, it's, um, my thoughts are, are a lot different. Just, just knowing, being able to organize thoughts professionally with someone whose job is strictly to do that and support us in that manner without, without any stake in terms of like, if she says the wrong thing, you're, you know, you're now working beside her serving coffee. She, she can really see the forest. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of be in the trees and, and, and do what it is that we need. To and do. it was, you know, we didn't need that early on when we had one to two, I felt like, because mm -hmm. we could kind of, we could do it all right. There, there is a point of how much a human can actually handle in capacity, but the further we scaled and the more, you know, once it, it was about that, well, once we opened up the Chinatown and the cook street location, we realized, you know, once you kind of got to that number, we needed another level and we needed somebody to help us with the organization. Like Jay said, like we're, we're professional in the hospitality world, but when it comes to organizational, you know, we, we, we realized it was, it was it, one of those decisions that not, not easy to make that, Hey, mm -hmm. we're not the best at this. We need somebody who's a professional. And, and she's really helped us kind of organize our, like Jay said, our thoughts for one, and then two, a, a little bit of some structure in the company, which is going to, which is really going to pay off. For was sure. there anything that sort of brought that up, like to the forefront that you finally made you like sort of realize, okay, we do need to, to sort of deal with that in a different manner and bring someone on? Well, is we had, we had thought about it, uh, six months prior to COVID to be honest, mm -hmm. but we couldn't really pull the trigger. Right. Um, just too busy. Um, but I think people have always said, you know, whenever they compliment, um, you know, our success or whatever, then, you know, they, I always, oh, what's, what's the secret, so to speak. And I'm like, it's our people. Mm. And I also felt that, uh, I think Brian and I both felt that we have taken our people as far as we can take them and to now bring someone else in to be able to work with them. And, and I think the interaction, you know, you take, uh, you take Julia that's here today how she interacts with me is probably gonna be different than the way she gets to interact with Adele because Adele is not her boss. Adele is someone that's in her corner that's here to help her become a better person. Mm -hmm. And like I said to Adele, beyond them just being better for this company, even if we graduate them off somewhere else and their experience here made them grow and develop and become better people, that's better for all of us in the long yeah. game of this. And we know we're gonna have people come in and they're gonna graduate on and move on to something better. And I think that's the biggest thing is that um, we've really been, um, everyone talks about this industry of needing reform. And um, I hate saying this about this industry right now a little bit, but there's a lot of, it's a lot of whining <laughs> sometimes about, oh, well, you know, this, this is an issue, this is an issue. And, you know, we throw fundraisers and stuff, but no, like, let's really do this. You know, we deserve it. And, and right now the government's going to help us do this a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, there's some subsidies in place and, like I said, we, we've chosen to use the subsidies to make our team healthier mentally and, and stronger yeah. to get through the other side. We've chosen not to use the subsidies. We're in a, re to, we're in a rebuilding stage, big time. right? Like yeah. we, from, we had to lay off. I love, I love that word side. though. Healthier. Like you're healthier. You're yeah. making your, your, your whole group healthier. I love healthier. that. So, I mean, if For you're sure. rebuilding block by block here, right, we're, we're back mm -hmm. down to, we had to, we had to lay off all of our staff. So everybody that we bring on now, if we have this as kind of our core value and part of the company, it's only going to pay off five years from now when we have a crew that is very, you know, healthy, empowered, empowered would be another word or you know? like it's, it's a really good time to rebuild. So it, it didn't like the conversation of whether we do this or not with, with the, with Adele and the, the people and culture position was, wasn't a difficult decision at all. It was and just, we wouldn't yeah. do it if we didn't have the people. Yeah. That's the other side of it, right? It's if we had a bunch of people that were just here trying to extract money from us, but man, when we, when we were at our worst, that's when you really find out um, the people around you. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. You know, it's amazing who disappears, but then they're the people 100%. that step up. Yeah. Those people 100%. that might have been sort of just 
like uh, yeah. in the shadows or something. Yeah. All of a sudden now they they're they're still there. I'm yeah. not gonna start start. I'm you know I'm not gonna start ripping off names here, but I'm telling you right now, like our core staff that exists with the village. Yeah. When all this stuff went down, as they you know, of course, some of them disappeared at the beginning due to, due to just, just being scared. To, yeah, right? oh, of course, and they had to deal with their own yeah. family. Yeah, I, but I as, disappeared for a bit from my stuff, and I hundred yep. percent. Yeah, but as everyone's come back online, they don't talk about money. Yeah, yeah. You know, they could all sit there and suck the serb dry, defer their rent. I mean, we're not paying them that much more than they would make doing that. And not only do they show up to work day in and day out in a very uncertain environment for. But for, they don't even ask us for money, you know? And that's why Ryan and I were like, you know, when we first kind of that announcement came, obviously the first initial gut reaction is to be like, okay, well, you just opened two restaurants, you've got five, like you probably have to cut a few of these, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But the whole reason we've always expanded is to give people more opportunity. And we feel like it'd be very selfish of me right now to just close everything off and just go back to Estevan and serve tables so I can feed my family when there's a huge network of people here that still want the opportunity and still can have the opportunity. And I think if we position ourselves properly with the people that aren't here out for themselves and everyone here is working for the greater good, which they are, especially the people that are on staff right now, which is why we're not open seven days. The last thing we want to do right now is bring in a bunch of um, um, outlying people that we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. nothing against those people that are going to come on new people that are going to come on board. But if you're going to come on board with us right now, you, we, we have to, we all have to have that same mind and that same goal. Yeah. And that's why when people are, oh, well, why aren't you at capacity? It's because we don't want to be at capacity. We don't, first of all, we don't really want to be busy. It's not for us. You know, it's, 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 I know there's only one case on the Island, but it doesn't matter. It's future practices for us and our staff are wary of it. And, um, so for us, Right now, uh, we only want to work what we're capable of working. And so we have to choose either to open full hours at a few locations, or we have to try to save all five. And we've chosen to save all five. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's our commitment right now. And I love the fact, yeah. though, that you have brought in, is her name Estelle? Adele. 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 Yeah. Okay. So shout out to Adele. Shout out Adele yeah. for sure. Yeah. But I, I love the fact you're doing that because sort of like like you said, like you're you're helping people, I guess, sort of um, have dialogue in a better manner. Mm -hmm. And that's going to translate outside of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's going to lead to like being a better, almost a better human being, better right? Human. Yeah. Just interactions yeah. in general. Gro and, uh, growth and development is one of our core values, which I, right? Which yeah. I love that it's, so it's, much. It's time. Yeah. Well, our staff, right? Like they're, they're yeah, sorry, our staff, you know, she doesn't like that word. No, yeah. our, team. Our, our team. Our team, our people, yeah. right? Yeah. Our family, right? These guys are young people. Yeah. They're young, vibrant, 20-somethings that these are the guys that, you know, hands of the world is in their hands, right? So if we can grow and develop them, because, you know, everyone has a restaurant job on their way up, man, to wherever yeah. they're going. And so I know I'm going to be a pit stop to potentially the next prime minister, whatever, right? And it's, it's, it's our job, I think, as part of, you know, for us, especially the village and our core values to continue to grow and develop the people that come in, which is why we're being very selective right now with who we let in, even though it does cost our bottom line yeah. and, and, and getting these restaurants open. Um, we, we want to be around a people for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So, so what, what's your history in the industry? I grew up, uh, born when I was born, my dad bought Samuel's restaurant downtown. Okay. It's a hotel restaurant. Yep. So, um, dishwasher by the time I was nine, you know, dad bring me to work and bus tables and whatnot and worked every position, um, all the way up until I was about 22, 23. Um, did a stint for two years as a realtor. Uh, didn't was had some had some mediums. He said I was the worst fucking realtor. Though, man, I'm <laughs> telling you right now. I mean the way I was wheeling and dealing, it was it was it was not right. But anyways, um, you know the now uh, when I was selling real estate, my dad went to sell the family restaurant, and at the time I had another business partner, and he was going through a tough time with his dad. His dad just passed away. Long story short, on a whim, we kind of decided to buy the family business. So my dad was a partner in that. And then we had Samuels. So I ran that for about eight years. Um, near the end, it was just by myself. And that was when I first started. I met you, right, Bri? Yeah. I had Samuels back yep. then. And then Samuels actually sold. The hotel sold to Concert Properties, became a development. That's a whole other story in itself. So I really had the rug kind of pulled out under me. A 30-year restaurant became nothing. And that's when we started looking at Ming's. And then that's why. So, I mean, for me, it's I've I've really seen the 
I have seen the good and the bad of this this hospitality business. I'm not not new to it. I've, I, I witnessed it as a young child, and I've seen it from different perspectives, from being the dishwasher to the boss to um, a customer to being the little kid that I'm Sam's son. And you know, so um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's not new for sure. There's there's some experience here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how, how much time do we have? Because I know you guys have something to do. Oh, we're, how are we looking? I'm, o I'm okay. We're good. You okay. Four, four, yeah, we're good. Oh, yeah, we're, we're good. good. So we're during COVID and all this stuff as of late, have you guys been going out and eating much? I mean, I, I see on Instagram all the time that you guys are eating, like you're saying, like the meals from the village. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you're eating from here all the time. Mm -hmm. Are there other places you've been going out and, and checking out? Yeah, you know, I've, it was funny because early days with during the shutdown it was pretty much there there was uh there wasn't a lot of time because we were quite busy with getting the v unit start up going and, and everything's so weighed a lot of that but i have gone out a couple times uh recently actually it was uh to to bring to, to have a little escape wife and i went for a little kayak over by brent in brentwood mm. and went to the brentwood bay spa or brentwood bay resort and oh, had yeah. a re really nice experience there they were it um how's the food there it was great. It was really yeah. good. Yeah, it was okay. really, really good. Yeah, we had, I mean, we ordered like a short rib sandwich. We ordered some some sushi. We ordered truffle fries. The server's like, you're going to have an upside stomach. What are you doing? <laughs> but but yeah, no, the food was great. Food is great. And it was, uh, it, 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 it's nice to, I feel like now it's it's beyond, you know, the, the masks and everything that you do see out. It's feeling more normal where it's a bit more, you know, the socially distanced thing is, is it doesn't feel strange when you're out anymore you yeah know, it's just kind of a way that we operate now yeah the first time i went out i went to the six mile pub and that was over that was a couple of, that was early early days and there was, it was a big room and there was like you know tables felt 30 feet apart even though they were only probably about six feet apart i'm like this is i don't know about this how are we going to get through this how's the industry going to get through it but it's definitely uh i i feel that it's it's almost yeah, I hate saying it's become the new normal, but it doesn't feel that strange anymore. Yeah. Um, and with patio spaces downtown, I think it's it's you know it's nice to see the the city relaxing their 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 rules a little bit and having all these patios on the street side. It, it brings a vibrancy to downtown, which is nice. Um, Are you guys gonna have a patio? Eh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we got I, our application in. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, just because you build one doesn't mean they'll come. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Of course. Um, we've got seats here to fill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that's part of it. Um, you know, yeah. So yeah, yes and no, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think if it was permanent, we'd invest the money and yeah. we'd do something really cool. Um, I, I really like what uh, Rob Kettner has done there on Hey Happy. I think it works really well for him. Mm -hmm. I think that. Brightens. What have they done? I haven't seen. Uh, he's got a really beautiful, bright, cool little patio. Pa pastel color patio. Yeah, it really so draws just your like, eyes. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's so good with his branding and all, and all that. And uh, I think for him, it works great, you know. Um, for us, um, I don't know we're, we're, we've definitely got our application in, I okay. don't, I don't know whether or not we're going to, we're going to follow through. Um, yeah. 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 You know where I had a really good meal actually, it What's was that? probably two weeks in to the shutdown and, and Jessica, my wife was like, we got it. We got to get some takeout. We got to do something. And, uh, chef cash road at, um, house of Botang. Oh, oh my God. He did, he did this, uh, sushi. Oh. It, it was, mm. it was like a Japanese style sushi night. And that was, uh. You know, it was it was kind of that like higher end fine dining um, in your home, which just after like two weeks, we we're like, oh, we missed some nice food. So so got that, and it was it, it was really 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 nice. So that was our first kind of, you know, that was early days in the shutdown, but that was a really great meal. Okay, Love I wasn't that. realizing he was doing dinner, especially that that, that soon in what. We I know something you don't. Oh, I think so. Follow Bam. my Instagram. No. <laughs> <laughs> Castro's awesome though. Yeah, yeah, super it was, nice guy. It, it was great. It was awesome. We we loved it, and uh, that was a great meal. Yeah, and uh, other than that, have you gone anywhere else? Or because I mean, I've seen I've seen Jason. I've, uh, I've seen you at Harvest Road. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know that that has nothing to do with COVID. That's just a summer tradition for me. Yeah. Um, it's something that we do. It's funny, we met, I was telling you a story, we met Brendan um, just, just out of his friendliness. I had no idea that uh, they, they were attached to Mitchell's at all. And it's just, we park our bikes at Lockside, we ride out to harvest. And I always knew like, it's just, you know, it really is the menu for the most part, it's fairly simple. They, mm -hmm. they, they have their own flair on all of it. But I was always like, damn, this food has just, just got that, that snap, that crisp, that freshness, right? And sure enough, once you find out, uh, from your podcast more than anything else that 
literally he's like it's all there hey father-in-law i'm uh, <laughs> yeah. i'm out of beans you know or whatever you can drop yeah. me off some lettuce man and he's like okay here he goes done, right and pulls it up on the tractor or whatever but yeah yeah harvest road and they look like they are doing so well man the I crushing mean, i mean so, just that, so the i'm whole so happy setup there it. it's so good it's like it's like built for this like yeah. i think their setup's almost better than it was previously well, and well, on the ride out i would compare there's this one stretch when you bike and it's um Dude, what's with those pigs on when you're riding out and you're yeah, close by? But okay, but yeah, after but, the pigs, <laughs> yeah. right? There's that one stretch where, like, right before the road to Mitchell's, it's like farm, like it's like farm on the left, farm on the right. Yeah. It like, just it's opens like, up. It's like yeah. you're really like it's like somewhere in Tuscany or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah, and you're, and you're you're in those like you're in the forest before. And totally, then it's like, oh, totally. It opens up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, from what I understand, he's um, uh, they're doing tacos out there soon. Right. Yeah, there's going to be tacos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's it's amazing to me that like when I say to people, "Have you been to Harvest Road?" Because I always don't yeah. shut up about them. Yeah. And then and then I'm like, you know, the blue building, Mitchell's the farm building. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's behind that, and people have like no clue. When Selfishly, it's, it, it's gotten a little busy. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know, it's it's funny because I don't it, even know if we should talk about it right now. It is one of the. No, it's, it's on that the, on that bike path, so it's got such a kind of cult following with all the oh, bikers, yeah. right? I'm so, sad so they're that, not doing the uh, the ice cream this year. Right. At least right. there's no plan to right now. And I love that. I love it when they do those You're little You're a sweet bowls. guy. You love it. A million percent. You, you, oh, you love so it. Good. Yeah, Dude, you like that, that tiramisu and that, that pasta dinner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who, who did the tiramisu? You know, that's, uh, that was actually not... That's store-bought that, product. That's oh, store-bought product. Yeah, it's Free a really... Thaw and serve. Yeah, that's a really nice product through uh, through Cisco, actually. So, so oh, we'll give a shout-out to Cisco. I really it's, enjoyed uh, that. Real, real wow, talk. Wow desserts. Real called. talk, Dallas. We are the types of people for us where if it's good, it's good, man. Yeah. Heinz yeah. ketchup, delicious. Yeah. Like, we don't make our own ketchup here, man. Tater, tater, tater you know, tots. Good, I mean, good. the Village yeah. Cook Street, that's that's one, of, one, of, our the most, one of our most popular SKUs. <laughs> yeah. We've done a lot yeah. of pop-ups and people are like, oh, those tater tots. I'm like, what about the other thing that we put all yeah. the effort yeah. into? Come on, like we're literally, but but so like you give people what they want. You got it. You got to blend it a bit, man. Yeah. That, you that's know? my opinion is yeah. like, there's a, there's a time and a place for everything. Totally. Yeah. And I try and appreciate no matter what it is. Yeah. It doesn't matter like if it, like when we're in Japan, Kit Anton Kats. and I. Kit Kats, Kats oh. you mean? Like you should have saw me at the, I was in one of the grocery stores and they had like we went all over the country and there was this one grocery store that had a collection of all the different Kit Kat flavors from all the different regions. Right. Because normally you have to travel sort of the, to the different regions. Right. Because like if like one, one uh, area will be a purple, purple sweet potato is what they're known for. Right. So they'll have Kit Kats available there in that type. But Crazy. there was one, Anton walked me off the ledge because I was going to buy like uh, 10 boxes of these things of different ones <laughs> just staring at the wall finish them on the way to the next yeah. restaurant that so i got like to. four boxes but um like that or like the vanilla coke float coke like it's mm. not vanilla coke but it's vanilla coke float coke wow so like even stuff like that i don't know there's i i appreciate it for what it was 100 right. yeah. yeah and i think that's food in general like i think with all of the stuff that's out there all of the nutritional marketing and all of that aside i think part of eating is 100 percent it's very important to eat for culture and happiness. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we lost our way a little bit there sometimes. And when I know with the village, we, we, we lost our way a bit there in that, how important that actually is. Right. In, in what way do you mean? How do you Just mean Just like, as an example, if you go to someone's house for the first time and you don't know, you don't know who they are and you, yeah, you're, you've been keto for a while, but you've been invited to someone's house and it's, 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 you know, it's, it's buddy's grammar or whatever. And she lays out this spread for you and it looks amazing, but, oh, I can't eat that. I can't eat that. It's like, well, in that moment, I get it, right? You're trying to not eat carbs. Yeah. But if an Italian one, you know, if an Italian grandma makes you pasta from hand, maybe you got to take that one down for culture, man. Right. And, yeah. and that's okay, right? Yeah. It's not going to kill you mm-hmm. and it's okay. Um, you know, I, all, I, I, I teach my children that understand when you're eating for health and understand when you're eating for culture and happiness. And, you know, we go to McDonald's, you know, but we also will go to nourish and, and have a great meal. So it's, you know, and we, and they know, they know the difference and they appreciate both. Right. And I think as human beings, you know, we have to do that. You can't be so rigid in your dietary restriction that you lose out on life because yeah. then what's the point, right? Well, it's funny with food too. I mean, the highlight of my day, most part revolves around food of some sort, right? Totally. So it's like, what was the best part of, you know, if, if your day, if you're not enjoying that meal, like that meal we just had, like that was, you know, all the different flavors. I would, I would love to do that all again, <laughs> you know? So, but the, so, the thing about that too, like you're saying though, like food, a big thing of it is being social. Yeah. Cause mm-hmm. like normally I eat really quickly, but totally. I was, I, I actually was talking a lot there. Like you were, mm-hmm. I was surprised that you guys are getting that much out of me. Cause normally <laughs> I'm just like chowing down. 
But it, it's funny because that's what food is. That's what food's meant for, right? Yeah. You know, it's meant to when you're breaking bread with people is to to connect. And I think that's actually one of the pluses of COVID has been people slowing down a little bit, reconnecting with food, cooking at home, enjoying family dinner. I mean, apart from Jay and I, because we we were working a lot, <laughs> but you know, a lot of people were, were were more connected than ever with food, and and they realize that this is a good time with your family. And, and, and so it's, it's nice to see that as a potential positive of this whole time is just the reconnection with, with food, quality ingredients and, and, and that connection. Yeah. I mean, my favorite place in the city is wrap and roll. And I've heard about this. Yeah. So I need to go there. I need so to go, honestly, yeah. like, I, I don't think that there's a place that, that, um, could top that place for me okay. because they transcend it's on a human being level. Okay. Like forget about how good the food that Mo makes is. Yeah. Cause like he, like he makes stuff in the back that I, I don't eat off the menu. Right. I eat all the stuff that they would have at home that he makes in the back every night. Like so, what's, so what's their what's the nationality there? Uh, they're Lebanese. Okay, mm-hmm. Lebanese. That's food. the one. So, like, is it, so it's authentic Lebanese food. A, a million percent. Okay, but by okay. the I, dr- I drive by it almost every day, and I hadn't. I don't before. think I've ever had Lebanese food. To be yeah, honest. dude. So like like, and they also have some Turkish stuff because Halim that works in there, he's Turkish. Okay, so they have these things called uh, lamajuns, which is like like uh, a bread with some wheat and and spices mixed together on top of the bread. But then they'll take some parsley and, and turnips and put it on that and they'll fry it or they'll cook, they'll um, warm it up and give it to you. Right. And like that thing, like it's like four bucks. I keep telling them to raise the price and they won't do it because they're like, oh, we want people to enjoy this food, right? Mm-hmm. To have access. But like that, that place, getting to know them um, has been like good for my soul. Mm-hmm. Right. Because like I, I'm, I've, you feel I've, the connection. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because like a lot of people that go there are, um, are from the Middle East, right. and it's a very different culture from me growing up here. Right, I'm, I've learned so much just in like in a, on a world scale of seeing it, how different culture operates. When you go in there, it's not abnormal to talk to like two or three people you don't know. Right, everyone talks to each other, I, and I think that's that's partially sorry that's partially what we're that's why we've done the Asian thing here. Yeah, right? for us, it, it's it's you know it's it's a similar story to that mm-hmm. you tradition. Know, it's um. Well, how do you, you know, introduce when you the, eat when you eat that pho and you're like, that's the best bowl of pho I've ever had? Yeah. It gives me a lot more joy than a full room. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like without a doubt. Right. And um, and that's what we want to really capture with all the stuff that we're doing moving yeah. forward here. Yeah. It's amazing though that when you have food and, and like the when you do get to learn the culture behind it mm-hmm. and meet the people from that culture and see how they operate, like that to me is just it's it's incredible. Mm-hmm. So um yeah, like last night uh or two nights ago, made Mo made um I can't pronounce it, but it's like <laughs> Molaclia. Mo- or I, oh, I, pretty good. I, I can't. Uh, I don't roll like, the R. We or don't whatever. speak with our. I can do ours, but like in Arabic, they speak a lot with their throats, right? right. And it's like like ta and ta, and and all these different things are like very different to them. Right. Whereas to me, it sounds the same because we speak with our lips, right? Um, so I, I've learned a little bit of Arabic actually being there, but uh, yeah, the stuff that that that's at Rap and Roll okay. is ridiculous. Okay. I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, insanity, but if you, if you drove past, you'd think it's a subway. Well, and that's I, well, I, I, I think I, they're, they, they've they, they, they've misbranded themselves. That's, a little I didn't, bit. I didn't, he did too I, good of a job. Well, with it, the branding, it, just, it just looks you know, a little like, bit like you kind of nailed it. It does look a little bit like a subway with the branding. It looks a little Canadian. He needs to just do like uh, some Arabic writing. I, I told him, you know what I mean, like a glowing like, Arabic writing. Sign. I wish they just had like a cardboard, like a, a piece of cardboard with something written on it. Yeah, yeah, totally. As soon as you walk in the doors, you see it's not like a subway. Is that right? eh? But uh, the outside, if you're just driving past, and and I I always joke with them about that. They did too. They his initial intention was to sort of to um, attract a bit more. It was it was to do like a franchise thing, right? Mm, So that's why they I think they did the branding at the start. I don't know for sure, but I think it was right. But uh, yeah, the food there, but it transcends. And like they had me to their house on uh, Christmas Eve last year. Because no I didn't, way. I didn't have anywhere to go, and I was there, and they were closing down for the night, and like, where are you going? And uh, they, they basically, I'm kind of like one of their sons now. Oh, that's amazing. That's cool, man. which that's is really cool. cool. So I got so this... I'll name drop you when I go there. Yeah. For, oh yeah, if you tell them some that free, that, some free stuff, the Dell sent you <laughs> free then, napkins. Yeah. Like if if you like garlic, there. Um, do you guys like garlic? Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's there's like they have tum, which is a garlic sauce. Okay. That garlic sauce, I call it crack sauce. Okay. Because it's right. like you tried it, you're addicted. It's it's just it's sweet. It's insane. Hook us up with them. Maybe we should do some cross promo stuff yeah. on the uh, bowls. That's the other thing right now with um, Village X at Cook Street. These bowls, like our goal eventually is that we're going to be able to feature other local businesses and use some of their ingredients, their proteins, um, their recipes, um, 
they can feature whatever it is they want. We can do the work and prepare it and uh, kind of almost have like a, not celebrity, but like kind of like a guest chef yeah. do up some stuff to just shine a light on someone like that. You know, I love that. Cause I mean, I mean, like, do you know, do you guys know Zatar? Yeah. Is it the yeah, spice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we use, use Zatar. Yeah. Do you use yeah. it? We do, yeah. 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 So like, that's a spice. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a bunch of different ones. Absolutely. Yeah. But then yeah. he has a whole bunch of other stuff that like, I've, I don't know what any of that is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like that Molokalia thing. Those are like leaves. I forget what type of leaves. But when, leaves. when he, uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't think it is. Okay. But when he prepares it, like he does it, but there, then there's like shredded ch or pulled chicken in there. It's, it's a wild mm -hmm. dish. And they put it with the special rice that they make. Okay. And it's just some other worldly thing. Right. Well, yeah. It's so good. Very cool, yeah. man. Very cool. Very cool. Hook us up with that guy. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. I try. I, I want everyone great, to go in there. The great connector, Dallas. This is your, this is well, your thing. Like at work, you're calling. You're calling. I don't know. At, at work, we we used to like we'd all go for lunch, and I would organize like the group of us that would go. There'd be like four of us that were at a lunch. We'd go for lunch, and then I stopped doing it, and then no one ever sort of carried that torch on because I'm I was just too busy. Right. Right. So I don't know. Maybe, I maybe I am that on some level of some sort. I don't know. Big time. I don't know. Guys, this has been amazing. It's great, man. Yeah. I've enjoyed yeah. this so much. Me too. Great. We'll have to do it again. And I mean, absolutely. Yeah. And I really appreciate all the things that you guys have done during COVID because you guys, for me, have stood out like more than pretty much anybody as far as the evolution and the changes that you guys have gone through. And your the village name comes out of a lot of people's mouths when, I, when I've asked about like who, who stands out to you during this time. And the evolution that you guys have gone through and the changes you've done, it, it has not gone unnoticed. So... Well, we, yeah. appre we appreciate yeah, it, man. And in yeah. Dallas, honestly, we really appreciate you, man. It's, yeah, uh, you know, I, I did a little post the other day, but I, you know, words can't describe, like, it's rare you meet people these days that, that put so much into something unconditionally without something in it for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, when we were at our lowest point, you were one of the first people to reach out to us to get us on CFAX. And uh, I'll never forget that. And uh, you're, you're a brother, man. We, Thank we, you. We yeah. You know, like, like I said, some of our, the closest people to me didn't get a phone call from. And, you know, Dallas from Vic Food Guys was like, hey, guys, love what you're doing. Let's get you out there. Let's, let's, let's try to help you get through the other side of this thing. And, um, you know, you, you were probably, it was early, man, when you reached out to me. It was, it was like, what, day after shutdown, right? So you had your own stuff going on, but you're still thinking about others. And, and, and I know the hospitality business, it's uh, same goes, you know, when we talk about Vic food guys, it's, it's, it's nothing but uh, gratitude for all the things that you do for, for, for our industry. Uh, Thank when you. we need it the mm -hmm. most. And sure. shout out to Mike, because without 100%. Mike, this would not have started without Mike. Shout out Mike. Yeah, Mike, we keep my, my, my elementary school, uh, we were we were hundred meter nemesis. It was, who is who is the <laughs> really? fastest at campus? Oh, we should and do I, a little uh, race. Old, yeah, old, that'd be I, sick. I will, like, I, I will tear a hamstring and a knee, and, he, and he'll be he, he'll be down. Uh, <laughs> Mike, yeah, Mike's no, already torn some stuff. He <laughs> tore his ACL or whatever. His, oh, knee, his knee was messed up. Yeah, perfect. Oh, no way. Okay, now's a good time, Mike. Let's meet out on the fields, bro. <laughs> but yeah, no. Shout out to Mike, and I. He's not an active member. I think as I've talked about a little bit in the past on mm -hmm. here, but uh, actually, him and Joe Perkins did both agree to come on an episode. So I think we're going to have like a noon show reunion of sorts. Oh, cool. cool with man. the three of us, which I, nice. I'm, I'm stoked about that. That's sweet. sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love both those guys. I love you guys. It's just, That's sweet. it's all about the love. All man. About the much love, man. love yeah, man. It is much, much love, love much man. love. Thanks for, thanks for setting this up. And yeah, we're really happy. Thank you. One yeah. last question. Yeah. Is there something that stands out to you is the biggest thing you've learned through owning a restaurant or a business, mm. a takeaway? the learning never stops. I mean, okay. the learning really never stops. It's like, it's funny how you think, you know, something, and then all of a sudden you're, you're seven years, eight years into it, doing it for yourself. And you realize you, you still don't know anything, <laughs> you know, and you're still learning every day. It's, it's quite the process, but I think that's a bit of a, a bit of a metaphor for life. You know, I where, think that's a hundred percent like you're, you're never, you're never at, you're, there's no finish line. And, I don't think and, we and ever if, really figure anything out. No. And if you don't enjoy the, the, you know, step by step, then what are we doing it for? So yeah, that, that's a big part of it. Yeah. But it's, it, you know, being in business for yourself is great. And I yeah. encourage people to continue to do it. I love entrepreneurship. I love people with good ideas. I love seeing a scones company take over the world, you know, mm -hmm. shout and, out to Chelsea uh, for that, out, uh, yeah, the, yeah. Like, honestly, the event on the weekend guys, guys, the guys at harvest to, um, you know, the rebrand at Cafe Mexico to seeing what my buddy at Fernwood Inn does to 
you know, what yeah, they shout do out with, to Mike. Yeah, shout yeah, out Mike, to Mike, Mike yeah. what they do at the Brasserie. I mean, we are surrounded here by, by incredible entrepreneurs and, um, it's not over, man. We're, no. we, let's keep going forward here. And then people, you know, that want to be in business, just, just make sure you're passionate and hardworking and, mm -hmm. and there's still opportunity for sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. And if people want to find out more on you guys on the village, where can they go? The village restaurant.ca, um, at village.hq. Instagram is probably the most live kind of network there. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to order some Asian food kits, full plug now. Full yeah. plug mode. Yeah, go, 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 let's go, let's go and open the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, Chinatown, um, you know, hours are changing. Things are shifting here. But uh, if you're interested in that pho and, and the, those Asian items, um, log on to Chinatownvillage.ca. Um, if you want to order a meal kit or uh, buy some groceries or buy some bowls, vunit.ca. If you want to come see us in the neighborhoods for brunch right now, it's uh, the village restaurant.ca. And just, just on the V unit uh, forefront too, we, we deliver uh, Monday to Friday. Deliveries take, uh, you know, from two o'clock usually to 6 p.m. We fill all our deliveries. We usually do about 24 hour delivery. So for next day delivery, put your order in, it'll show up on your doorstep. You organize a time with us. We contact you. It's all done contactless through the website. Take your uh, MasterCard or Visa information all all through the website. So it's a it's a pretty pretty seamless uh, uh, operation that we were able to create. And the there's COVID. everything on there. Like you even yeah. have like a cocktail section. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You can get a crunchy bar. You can get a you can get a mimosa <laughs> kit. You can get a, a Moscow Mule. You can get warm bowls. You get you, you and if you don't see it, ask for it. You yeah. know, we're here to serve. Honestly, it's, like, I, I would think we're here that to serve the community. A lot of so. those things would have been people asking, "Hey, can 100%. you do this?" Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and we're we'll just we're we're keeping expanding and keep growing that side of the business. So it's uh, if we yeah. can do it, we'll do it. Yeah, awesome. So, thanks, brother. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks a lot, Dallas. And for anybody looking for what I'm doing, go to um, www.vicfoodguys.ca. And if you can please give a like, a follow, whatever on the platform that you're listening or watching this on, I would really appreciate that. So thank you. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye.